Hello friends, welcome to eHiddenBrain.com. Today we will see a difference between NFA and a DFA. So NFA is non-deterministic finite automata, DFA is deterministic finite automata. So now before we go for NFA and DFA, let's try to understand uh, the transition function with a given automata. So let's say this is one of the given automata. I just start with this. This is called as a start state because this arrow denotes it's a start state. I can call this as a start state, right? So my machine always start from this state and let's say the name of this state is M1 for time being. Next there is again another state called M2 and it on transition 0. Here there is one transition of 1. Here there is a transition of 1 again. Again for a 0, I go to the final state and the final state is denoted by two circles. So this is final state. Understood? This is a final state. Now the transitions are the loop of 0 and 1. What it means is on M1, if I get 0 as input, so I will go to M2, right? On M2, if I get 0, I will go to M3. Understood? So on M1, if I get 1, I will be staying on M1 only. If I get 0 again, then I will go to M2. On M2, if I get 1 again, I will stay on M2 again. So this is how this transition works, right? So actually you can say that if I give you input string 0, 0, right? So let's say this is the input string. Now this 0, 0 will be definitely accepted because for the first 0, so this was this is the start on the start if I get 0 where I go I go to M2 so this this 0 leads me to M2 and then on M2 if I again get 0 where I go to I go to the final state so understood for 0 0 it works now let's say for another input called 1 0 1 0 let's say whether for this it works or not so for start if I take 1 I will stay on M1 for 0 I goes to M2 for M2, I am staying on M2 again and for this 0, I am going to the final state. So yes, this is also accepted. Now let's take the input 10111. So let's take an input called 10111 three times. So let's say what happens with this, whether this string is accepted or rejected, we will be able to see by this automata. On M1, if I get 1, I will be staying on M1. On M1, if I get 0, I am going to M2. Now on M2 if I get 1 I am staying on M2 again, again on M2 again I get 1 again I am staying on M2 again I am staying on M2 it means I am not leading to the final state. You can see that I stopped here at M2 I am not reaching to the final state. So if string is to be accepted it must reach to the final state so hence this string is not accepted I can say. So now let's see how this machine let's say I call this as machine M. So now how this machine M will be represented we already see mathematically it will be represented by Q, Sigma, Delta, S and F. So it's a 5 tuple machine where Q will be set of states. So how many states? 3 states M1, M2 and M3. Right? Then the Sigma is the input alphabet and it's again a set of 0 and 1. So input alphabet is a binary here. Now what is Delta? Before I discuss the delta, let's see what is S and F. S is the start set, which is again a singular set, M1. And F is a final set, final uh, set of states. And what are those? Here again it is M3. So it's again a singular here, but it can be multiple. Okay, now let's see what is delta. So how delta will be represented? Now you can see that delta is represented as a table. Right? And how many input alphabets? Two input alphabets. That's why 0 and 1 will be there as a column. And the number of states will be here. M1, M2 and M3. Now how to denote the first state? Uh, arrow will be given. That will be the first state. And the star will represent the final state. Right? Now you can see that on M1, if 0 comes here. On M1, 0 comes. Where I go? I goes to M2. On M1, if 1 comes, where I go, again I will lead to M1 only. Right? On M2, 
if 0 comes I goes to m3 and on m2 if 1 comes right where I goes again on m2 understood on m3 for 0 I goes to m3 or for 1 also I goes to m3 so this is a transition function which can be denoted as I can even denote something like this a transition of m1 on 0 where it leads to transition is a function where m1 is an input along with 0 and that will give you the output where it leads to and it leads to m2 again transition is a function where for m1 if 1 comes i goes to m1 next transition function on m2 for 0 gives you m3 and then transition function m2 on 1 leads to m2 understood how to read this function so this is f of x is equals to y here f is a function x is an input so i can call this as a function this is input and this will be output of the function right similarly you can see this in this delta m2 and 0 are two inputs so these are let's say two inputs I can call this as input this is a transition function transition function and this is the output where it leads to right so and the final one is delta of m3 on 0 is delta of m3 on 1 which leads to m3 only right now let's see what is the difference between uh, NFA and DFA So let's see what is NFA and what is DFA. So for DFA I will make one definition you can look here a DFA I can say in case of DFA for from each and every state so from each and every state for every input alphabet or symbol you can say for every input symbol there should be there should be exactly one transition exactly one transition right and in case of NFA in case of NFA there should be there should be more than one or zero transitions more than one or zero transitions okay now let's try to see this by an example i will draw two states one will be i will draw two machines and one will be nfa one will be dfa so let's try to draw a DFA first I will draw a small DFA here in front of you so let's say this will be DFA this will be state 1 and this will be the final state I can call it that S2 right and let's say this is 0 on transition of 0 it goes to S1 again and on 1 it goes there here on 0 1 it leaves there and I will parallelly draw a NFA 2 for you so this is let's say DFA now I will draw a NFA for you. Now let's look at the NFA. Same I will draw S1 and S2. These are the two states. And on 0 it goes here, comma 0 1 it leads here. And here I will say it is for 1. So now let's try to see the difference between the NFA and DFA. So this will be definitely DFA. And this will be definitely NFA. Why? look at the state s1 on s1 if i get 0 i am going to s1 only so it is very deterministic where to go on 0 but on s1 in nfa you can see that for 0 i have two choices so it is not deterministic in nature and that's why it is called as nfa2 it's not determining where exactly it leads to it can lead you to an s1 
or S2 because of these two zeros are there on different transition lines. Here you can see that it is very deterministic. On zero it will go to S1 and on one it goes to S2. Similarly here in NFA on S2 we are not sure where to go on zero. On one I will definitely go to S2 but on zero where I go I don't know and that's why it is non-deterministic in nature. If I draw a transition table of these two states sorry these two automatas you will you will be able to see something like this this is 0 1 s1 is the initial state s2 is the final state it leads you to s1 s2 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 and for nfa you can see that on 0 1 again s1 s2 s1 is the initial state this is the final state now on s1 on 0 i can go to s1 or s2 and on S1 with 1 I goes to S2. Now on S2 for 0 I don't know where to go so I will say it is dash and then on S2 for 1 again I leads to S1. So you can see that there is a difference between a transition table. It says there should be exactly one transition in case of DFA and yes it is there. It is 1, it is 1, it is 1 and it is 1. But in case of NFA it can be more than 1 or 0 transition you can see that. These are more than one, these are two transitions, these are zero transition, these are one transition. So I can better say NFA is a superset of DFA. So how I can say that? This will be definitely NFA, then this will be DFA. Why? Because DFA is a subset of NFA and DFA is a special case of NFA where all the transitions leads you to a deterministic state means only one state in case of NFA it can lead you to a different states right okay thank you very much